Hi green lovers, it's mid-March and time for another garden tour. It's been a month since I last showed you how the plants were doing and I want to show you how much has changed in the one month when the weather changed from winter to spring. So come along with me and I'll show you what's going on. I'll also give you a little sneak peek into the seedlings that are getting ready for coming out into the garden for summer and stay tuned till the end because I am going to show you a sneak peek of my transformation that I'm doing to my backyard. We're doing a DIY remodel and I want to take you along the journey. So first off my garlic. These have grown probably the most since the last time I showed them to you. These are now about three feet tall. This is music garlic and when I showed them to you last time they were just about there and now they've grown all the way here. So this garlic is growing massive and I am hoping for some nice big bulbs. You can see that the stem is thicker than my finger. So the stem is an indication of the size of the bulb. So hoping I'll be successful there and growing some nice big garlic bulbs this year. As I turn around here, this bed is pretty fallow, but I wanted to show you the devastation that has been caused by the mice and other rodents. They have trimmed all of these peas down. They should have been about that size by comparison. That plant was spared for some reason, but no, they were all chopped off at the top. So I'm just going to let them be. I'm hoping that there is still enough time to get a harvest if the rats don't get to them before that. Quick glance at my green stalks. They have absolutely exploded. If you remember, I showed you that a lot of these plants were just kind of starting to grow in the last video. These are all cool weather plants. This is a red acre cabbage, some Merlot lettuce, some romaine lettuce. The parsley is starting to grow very quickly. The green onions are absolutely taking off, taking over. Got to do something about them. And then the strawberries are starting to produce lots and lots of leaves and also some fruit coming in. So I am excited about that. I've got what turns out to be, I think, a purple sprouting broccoli plant that I grew here. And a lot of these things are starting to bolt. All the cool weather plants are starting to bolt. And I've got mustard greens, Swiss chard. This was a little tiny thing in the last video that I showed you. I've got some Chiji Masai Tatsoi growing here, some nasturtiums here and there. I've got these absolutely gorgeous Johnny Jump Up pansies. I just love them so much. I'm going to try and do some pressed flowers out of those. Uh, some more broccoli that um, didn't form a head, but it's got a lot of sprouts. I'm not too worried when it doesn't form a head because I just come and clip off these sprouts and throw them into my pastas and other dishes. Uh, in fact, all the brassicas produce sprouts that taste like broccoli. This here is Mizuna and I've got that also starting to flower. So yeah, the cool weather harvest is pretty much coming to an end for me. And things like romaine lettuce are growing huge and starting to also bolt. So if I want to use it, now is my last chance to use it. So one thing I wanted to share with you about nasturtiums, folks. Now, when you look up transplanting nasturtiums, they usually tell you that nasturtiums do not like being transplanted. But if you remember, I showed you a tray in my last video where I had a lot of almost overgrown nasturtium seedlings that I needed to get into my garden. So I bucked the trend. I started them from seed and I brought them out and they are all growing just fine. In fact, they've started flowering. So yeah, nasturtiums transplant really, really well. These daisies. I just love this time of year for daisies particularly. I've got sweet alyssum also that's popping up everywhere. This thing, if you have it once in your garden, it'll volunteer forever. So I've been picking little plants out of the ground and putting them all over my garden. Now this is the time of year that mint starts to grow very, very rapidly. So I built these little beds um, and I put these retainer bricks around it with the intention of containing the mint to the best that I could. And obviously mint has a mind of its own and these things grow out and grow really, really large, but they're pretty easy to pull out. So I wouldn't exactly call them invasive, but yeah, <laughs> mint needs to be contained. They smell so good. Mm. 
If you're enjoying my garden tour so far, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. I love gardening and I love creating content for you and it really motivates me when you appreciate me by throwing comments as well as hitting that thumbs up, subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for this wonderful community that we are building. So brassicas, yes, they are all bolting. I've got two different kinds here. These are actually tree kale. I showed them to you in the last video. They were starting pr to produce some buds and now they're in absolutely full bloom. This particular plant, I actually tried removing the blossoms for about a couple of weeks. Every time I saw them, I'd break it off, I'd eat it, but eventually it takes over. It has decided that it wants to bolt, it wants to produce flowers, so that's what it's doing. And since the pollinators love it so much, I'm not gonna argue with nature. I showed you my rat tail radish last time. It was a tiny little plant. Now it's full of blossoms. And I know that the next time I show it to you is going to be all those radish pods that this thing is famous for. It is not famous for the roots at all. It is famous for the little beans that it produces and of course the gorgeous blossoms. So the last time around I had just planted my potatoes and I promised you that in the next video I'd have a lot of potato plants over here and this bed has not disappointed. You can see all the plants popping up and this is after I actually came and put a thick layer of leaf mulch over it. And the reason I add the thick layer of mulch, actually let's clear up a myth right now. So let's talk a little bit about hilling potatoes and why we do it. Now hilling is the process of covering the potato plants with leaves, or at least the stems of the potato plants with leaves during their growth period. And as they grow taller and taller, you come in and you add more leaves around the base of the potatoes. You want to hill potatoes because when they are exposed to sunlight, they will get that green color and it, they get slightly toxic and just, you know, they give you a tummy ache. So you don't want to eat green potatoes. So you want to cover them for that reason. There's a couple of other reasons why I hill up my potatoes as well. One reason is because during the early spring days or maybe late winter days, which is typically when I plant my potatoes, I do have a frost date here or there and that can kill off the newly emerging potato leaves. And so the mulch layer really does a lot to protect the young growth from the frosty nights. Finally, another reason why I hill potatoes or mulch them heavily is because it helps retain the moisture in the soil. Potatoes do need the soil to be nice and moist, particularly when they are in active growth. Hilling potatoes really makes a huge difference in keeping that moisture content the way it needs to be to support all of this wonderful active growth that's happening right now. So that's just for you to know that this concept of indeterminate potatoes where the plant keeps growing and producing potatoes along the stem that's really a myth potato plants typically produce their harvest just around the root area a little bit below for the longer season potatoes it may go up to maximum a foot along the stem so all those potato towers that you see where you just keep filling them up and then you get potatoes all along the stem doesn't work that way A quick peek at my kohlrabi. Look at that. It is so ready for harvesting. In fact, I have harvested a couple already. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest all of these. Now these were supposed to mature in about 30 to 45 days. They're called quick star kohlrabi. It took at least three months to get to this size. So take it with a grain of salt depending on what time of year you plant it. It grows faster versus slower. During the winter months particularly, it grows really, really slow and I grew these over winter. I wanted to show you those two window boxes that were teeny tiny lettuces in the last video. And uh, this one here is the tatsoi. They have grown so much in just one month. I've got some more tatsoi over here. Now, interestingly, both these are exactly the same age, but this one stayed in my greenhouse for about two or three weeks longer than this did. And look at the size difference between the two. My dill continues to look so amazing. I'm not harvesting it enough. I just enjoy the scent and I enjoy doing this. It's just great. So this is the other side of my house and my lettuces, this romaine, oh my goodness, it feels 
Look at the sound of that. ASMR for you right there. These leaves are so, so perfect. They're at the right tension and they just look so beautiful and they're definitely ready to eat. Green sorrel has started to flower and go to seed. It has never done this before, so I am keen to see what kind of blossoms it has and maybe I'll collect some seeds. Continuing past my sweet alyssum to this cage that I showed you last time that was covered because I am having a rodent issue but they can't get to these beautiful beautiful red acre cabbage and more romaine and the Charleston Wakefield cabbage over here it is um, it is being overcrowded by these romaine lettuce so I'm gonna just have to harvest this and I am gonna have to make smoothies out of it or something because how much salad can you really eat just seeing if there's a head of cabbage forming looks like these actually may be bolting I can see from the length of the stem that it looks like this is bolting so looks like I might have missed my window again of getting a head of cabbage but the leaves the leaves are always delicious I have removed the covering that I put over my citrus plants because the mild frost that we might still get are going to be fine. The citrus is going to be able to handle it. And one little tip about citrus, as long as you leave it on the plant, it stays ripe and fresh and yeah, it doesn't deteriorate. So unless you've got rodents like I do, which will come and eat these away at some point, you can actually leave your citrus on your tree almost indefinitely. Now know that you know, as you get new buds starting to form, you want to make way for the new, remove the old. So I'm going to shortly harvest all of these Meyer lemons. You may notice that my dragon fruit has made its way out of my greenhouse. So it has come back to its original spot. I have been tying the long trailing vines that are coming out of it and trying to make them go downward instead of upward like that one. And I've noticed that the color is coming back a little bit, though I don't know what this is. If you guys know what this kind of disease is, some kind of rust is what it looks like. I hope it's nothing that is going to damage the entire plant. I'm going to have to go do some research on it. But I'm hoping that if all goes well, I'm going to actually get some real fruit this year. Now, this plant was a tiny little plant about just a year ago. It was just about, I'd say, the size of this plant, which I'm actually growing from a cutting. And it just grows really, really, really fast and massive too. Speaking of tiny plants, this is my yellow dragon fruit that was started from seed and it is starting to get pretty sturdy. So I'm hoping that this is going to be looking like this a year from now. We'll see. Egyptian walking onions. I showed you last month they were about maybe half the size, but this is the time of year for green onions and Egyptian walking onions are no exception. I've covered these up. These are my lettuces because again I've been having trouble with little mice coming and getting to it but obviously this thing is no deterrent whatsoever because if I look underneath you can see they've all been eaten away so I'm gonna have to do something else to keep the mice away don't know what just yet any tips any tricks that you can share with me please please in the comments below I would love to hear of how I can take care of these mice in a humane manner I also up potted my fuchsia plant which was in a hanging basket that I got from the store. It was a total disaster, you guys. The plant just did not want to come out of that basket. It broke into several pieces. The flowers dropped. It was just a sorry mess. And it looks like it is starting to come back, but it's definitely not at the full glory that it was when it was in the basket. By the way, the cuttings that I took, which some brilliant person suggested that I do, all of them have rooted. It is so easy to root fuchsia cuttings. So just something to keep in mind when you get a plant from the store and you're worried that it may not survive, try propagating it before it dies so that you've got backups just in case that happens. Okay, we're back in front of my greenhouse. Let's go take a look at how my seedlings are doing. Let me spin you around. The seedlings are doing gloriously. I have got uh, basil, I've got all kinds of flowers, I think those are black-eyed Susan, some foxglove, I've got tomato plants, I've got pepper plants, 
I've got zinnias and these zinnias need to be topped because they are growing a little too tall. I started them a little too early. Looks like I've got some nitrogen deficiency with that pepper there so I'm going to have to give them some nutrients. But yeah, the plants are pretty much ready to go in the garden. Look at that, nice and tall. And then I noticed that some tomato plants are actually starting to produce suckers. So right there is a sucker, the one that's in the kind of the armpit between the branch and the main stem. You don't want those to be taken away from the growth of the plant at this stage. Plus, when I plant them in the garden, I'm going to be burying them fairly deep. So all those suckers will be buried. So might as well remove them right now and send up all the energy into the plant itself. Spinning around here, my coleus. Look how pretty those little seedlings are. They're one of my favorite seedlings. They're so sweet. And um, I've got my impatience that have grown nice and tall. And my succulents, I think they're ready to be put into little pots by themselves. Look how big they've grown. Aren't those just darling? I've got some figs that I just stuck in the soil and looks like they are starting to produce little buds right there. So yeah, just a lot of stuff going on in the greenhouse and I am loving it. And I'm so glad that I got this greenhouse. It has given me so much joy over the winter. So as promised folks, I'm going to now show you some footage, some drone footage of my backyard remodel. Very much a work in progress, very early stages, but it's starting to look like what it's going to be as far as the layout goes. And I want to share that with you. So let's go ahead and take a look at those pictures. And until next time, folks, live green and love your greens. <laughs>